Okay, we're going to investigate coil and plug ignition systems here. So we're taking a look at a Toyota Yaris engine, four-cylinder engine, which has, as you can see there, there are four separate ignition coils. Each of the ignition coils is sitting directly on top of a sparking plug. The advantages of this system are it's very, very simple, very little to go wrong. We don't have to worry about HT leads, uh, distributors, rotor arms, anything like that. So let's take a look at a coil and plug coil. So here we can see a typical coil. This is one from that engine. And you can see here, this coil contains everything necessary to produce a high tension spark. In the head of the coil are the primary and the secondary windings. And going into the front of the coil are four wires. So we have to find out what those four connections are. Now, you, as you notice there, all four connections are low tension connections. Here we can also see the sparking plug. And this is where the sparking plug sits in relation to the coil. The coil sits directly on top of the sparking plug, hence the term coil on plug, sometimes abbreviated to COP. Okay, we got a look at a wiring diagram. In this case, it's Autodata. And here we can see the four ignition coils. Now we're going into coil number two, simply because it's a little bit more accessible and the engine coil number one is obscured by the dipstick. Okay, if you look at uh, coil number two, like the other coils, there are four separate connections. The first connection is from terminal 15, and we know that terminal 15 means live on the key. The second connection, connection number four, just runs directly to ground. So this is the live and the ground supply to the coil. So if we want to measure the current consumption of the coil, we're going to have to get into one or other of the wires. There are also two more connections underneath, connections three and connections two. So if you look at connection uh, three, you can see it runs down to the ECU. And if you look at connection two, it's joined to all the other coils and also runs to the ECU. Now what this tells me is that wire number three is the wire that carries the unique signal that um, triggers coil number two. So if we want to measure what's happening with coil number two, we're going to have to get into that wire. Okay, so we're going to use an acupuncture probe to do that. So first of all, we're going to just go and take a look at the four wires. So there's the four wires there. So first of all, we want to get into um, the green wire there with an acupuncture probe. We'll just take a quick look at that there. And you can see the acupuncture probe is pointed. And the reason for that is it's, it allows us to slide up along the side of the green wire. We're not going to damage the harness and we're not going to damage any insulation. Now the other wire there, the black and red, we want to get a magnetic uh, probe around that because we want to sense how much current the coil is consuming. Okay, that looks good. Let's go and see if it's showing on our oscilloscope. And there you can see it. Okay, so channel A is the blue channel, and you can see there, that's measuring the current consumption of the coil. Um, the little yellow diamond there, that's to indicate that I've set a trigger, that whenever this line rises to that point, the oscilloscope will dis display this event. The red line in the background, well, that's the other word. This is where the coil is being switched on and being switched off. So obviously, as soon as the coil is switched on, you can see the current start to rise. And as soon as the coil is switched off, you can see the current stops immediately. Okay, so now we know when the coil has been signaled on and been signaled off. The length of that red line there is actually the dwell time. In other words, the time that the coil is being charged. All the hands at this game would equate this to the time that the points are actually closed when the coil is being charged up. Right, so the next event that we want to look at there, and you can see we already have the green line, the third channel there ready to go, is we want to see what's happening high tension wise with, um, with, 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 the, with the coil. Now, because we don't have any direct access, we're going to use a particular type of probe. And what this does is it picks up the magnetic field from the top of the coil. Right, so we're just going to put it on top of the coil. And we may have to move it around somewhat. Okay. So let's go and see what we have here. 
and now we're getting all three traces so this looks good so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually stop it so I've hit the space bar in the computer and I've frozen the frame so now let's look and see we can switch off this engine let's look and see what's going on here so going back to where we switch on the coil we're going to get a small spark and that would be reflected on the HT line so that's known as a switch on spark um, as the coil charges up the coil will consume current and then the instant that the coil is switched off you'll notice that there is a peak in the voltage on the green line so that point there is the actual firing voltage now once it uh, once the coil fires there is a, an ionized path established across the ground and the spark will continue to jump and the spark duration or the burn time is represented by this line here so we can actually measure that um, as the spark energy dissipates we can see the final few oscillations here so the spark stops and then the last bit of energy is dissipated out and we know now from other studies that uh, we should have four or five little oscillations here which we have which would indicate a healthy coil now if we want to go and measure the burn time we can simply go to the corner and drag out our measuring bars and we can find out exactly what our burn time is so that's where the spark finishes go back and drag out another one And that's where the spark starts. So if we look carefully, we might be able to see it here. And the actual burn time is 1.86 milliseconds. So there you have it. Coil on plug. We've monitored the switch on, switch off signal. We've monitored the current consumption. And we've monitored the HT spark.